So what are the range of outcomes for spina bifida? And the answer to this question really depends on the level of the defect in the spinal cord. So early in gestation, there's a structure called the neural tube, and this is what goes on to form the spinal cord. And normally, this structure, the neural tube, is supposed to close completely by about a month into the pregnancy. And when it doesn't close, the, um, the condition that results is called spina bifida. It also goes by a few other names, myelomeningocele or neural tube defect. And it can happen really at any point along the spinal cord. So it can happen higher up you know, in the back or lower down in the back. It's much more common lower down in the back. But the, the exact level at where it occurs is really what determines the ultimate outcome for spina bifida patients. So we measure the level by the level of the vertebral body. And the vertebral body is the, um, what you can sort of feel on your back as you sort of march up your back, you feel little prominences. And these are called spinal processes or little bones that are coming off vertebral bodies. And we count the number in any given person. And we measure the level of the spinal defect by the vertebral body. So we know that if a woman is diagnosed um, as having a, a baby who has a um, spinal defect that is at a level higher than L2, which stands for lumbar vertebra 2, um, that carries a very high risk of needing a wheelchair for life. We know that if you're, a woman is diagnosed as carrying a baby with a uh, spinal um, defect lower than that, then there's a good chance for at least partial independent ambulation um, or being able to walk independently. Lesions that are below S2, and S stands for sacral vertebra 2, have uh, a very good chance for independent walking. So there are a lot of other complications besides just the motor function or ability to walk uh, associated with neural tube defects or with spina bifida. And the probably the most important one is an associated complication in the brain. So there's something called a Chiari malformation, which is where the base of the brain um, basically is positioned too low so that it actually extends into the top of the spinal cord. And when this happens, you can get a complication called ventriculomegaly or hydrocephalus, and that just means that there's too much fluid accumulation in parts of the brain. And this is a, a fairly frequent complication with spina bifida. And if it's severe enough, requires something that we call a VP shunt after birth. And VP stands for ventriculo, which is a space in the brain that's got too much fluid. And um, peritoneal refers to the abdominal cavity. So there's a shunt that's actually placed from inside the brain and tunneled through the body so that the excess fluid can drain into the abdominal cavity.